Hey everyone, my name is Jose Jose and I'm a developer advocate for the TomTom Tom Maps APIs. In this video, we'll go over the root parameters in our APIs to support trucks and commercial vehicles in general. We have talked before about creating simple routes, calculating the reachable range, and using the matrix routing to get summaries of itineraries. All of these were created by default for automobiles, for simple vehicles. But many companies are not aware of the many rich combinations in our APIs to support the creation of this route for commercial, trucks, and delivery and vans, etc. If we have a nice code example using these APIs with these parameters, thank you to Adam right here. Let's take a look. I'm going to show you how to create a simple routing app using React. In VS Code, I have an empty project folder. We'll start by opening the terminal and scaffolding our app with Create React App. We can run that using Yarn Create. We'll take about two minutes for all the dependencies for Create React App to be downloaded and for the app to be scaffolded. Now that our starter app is created, we'll open the generated file app.js and replace the functional code generated by Create React App with a class-based component. We'll add a div to contain our map. Next, we'll create a ref to attach to the React element. This will enable us to get a reference to the DOM element, which we'll use when instantiating our map. Use the create ref function to create the ref and attach to the React element we're using as the map container. We'll return to the terminal and add the TomTom Web SDK and Web SDK services packages to our project using Yarn. In our app component, we'll import the packages we just added. I'm going to define a couple of constants for the API key and map start location. You can get an API key by signing in for an account on our developer portal. The next step is to instantiate the TomTom map component using the ref to the DOM element we created earlier. We only want to do this once in the component's lifecycle, so we'll do this in the component did mount lifecycle method. The last thing we need to do to visualize our map is to specify its dimensions in the component style sheet. Let's take a look at our app in the browser. The map doesn't look quite right, the reason being is that I forgot to import the style sheets, both for the SDK and also for our app. So let's include those now and take another look at the map. It looks much better. We also want to release the resources used by the map when our component is unmounted, which we'll do in the component will unmount method. To set up the route start and end points, we'll add a click handler to the map that will add a marker and store a reference to the marker in our component's state. We'll want to store a reference to the markers that are added to the map, so let's initialize the component state and add a key called markers which we'll initialize to an empty array. We'll destructure the markers property from the component state, then we'll check if we have less than two markers. If we do, we'll create a new marker, set its location to the click coordinate, and add to the map. Finally, we'll update the marker's state to a new array containing a copy of any markers already in the component state, along with the new marker that we just created. Lastly, we'll add our event handler as a listener on the map's click event, and take another look in the browser. Each time we click on the map, a new marker is added until we have two markers on the map. So we can calculate a route We'll add a button to the interface and style it. Let's now write the function that will calculate the route. We'll be calling this function twice, once to calculate the route using the default options, and a second time using some of the available truck routing options. Our function will accept two arguments, the route options and a color to use to draw the route. We'll also be creating it as an async function so that we can handle the promise returning calculate route function from the TomTom Tom services library as if it were synchronous. In the function body, we'll first call calculate route with the route options. We then convert the response to GeoJSON. And we're going to add the layer to the map. When we call add layer, we're going to use the color passed to the function as the layer ID. We're going to use the GeoJSON data that we got back from the calculate route function as the source of the data for the layer. And finally, we're going to define some paint properties. Firstly, using the color as the line color and setting a line width. Next, we'll write an event handler function, which will check that we've added a start and end marker to the map. And if we have both, 
for the calculate route function we just wrote with their locations and the desired route options. First, we check if we have two markers. If we have less than two markers, we can't route. If we do, we proceed by getting a coordinate for each marker and adding that to a variable locations. We then call the calculate route function we just wrote twice. The first time, we'll just be using the default options for the API and passing in the color green as the line color. The second time we call calculate route, we're going to be using a travel mode of truck, and here we use some of the specialized vehicle routing parameters provided by the TomTom Tom routing API. Uh, the first is the load type, in this case we're using other hazmat explosive, and the second is the vehicle weight, which is 8,000 kilograms. The TomTom Tom routing API provides a number of other vehicle related parameters of interest to fleet operators. You can find these under the common routing parameters section of the routing API docs. We'll use red as the color for the truck route. Let's call that route function from the click handler at the route button and try that out in the browser. If we select two points on the map and click the route button, we see we now have two routes, a standard route, the green line, and the truck route represented by the red line. To finish our app off, let's add a clear button that when clicked will remove the route layers from the map, destroy the markers, and then set the marker state on the component to an empty array. For each layer we added to the map, we also added a data source. So let's write a function that we'll call once for both the standard route and for the truck route. We'll call this remove route, and in it we'll first remove the layer with the ID passed to the function, and then we'll remove its data source. We'll then write our clear function. Firstly, we destructure the markers array from the application state, and then for each marker, we call remove on the marker. This will remove it from the map. We'll then reset uh, the marker's application state. And finally, we'll call our remove route function once for each of the two layers that we added to the map. After adding our clear function as the click handler for the clear button, we can now go back to the browser and test our new clear function. That's it, we've now written our simple routing app in React. And that is all for today. Thank you Adam for that tutorial. We have left the link to the GitHub repository in the description down below. Let us know in the comments if you have questions or want more complex use cases. Don't forget to subscribe and as usual, Thank you for watching and happy mapping.